We're back on Action Line, and we have as our guest the president and CEO of Sea Alaska Corporation, Mr. Chris O'Neill. Tell us about your, uh, pretty much your, your latest initiative, Ha Honey. Well, the, the path to pers- prosperity is a, a really exciting collaboration between the Ha'ani Community Development Fund and the Nature Conservancy. We really believe that it's important to develop these kinds of partnerships to deal with the extensive challenges, especially in our villages. As you might know, the villages have been shrinking radically over the past several years, uh, principally because there, there are very few jobs and they've not been an area of growth. And we really believe that some, the path to prosperity is a, is a signal that innovation can a, occur on a, on a local basis and that we will provide means to be able to, uh, to fulfill that. And we have uh, Alana Peterson here who would like to comment further on that because I think Better it's a really great there was a press time. release put out today, and Alana, I understand that you might want to speak about that. Correct. Um, We just finished round one of the Path to Prosperity, also known as P2P competition, and that's where we asked uh, applicants from all over Southeast to submit their ideas for new business um, or existing business entrepreneurship ventures. And we narrowed down from 59 applicants to the top 12, and those top 12 were announced today, and they will be attending a boot camp um, October 11th to 13th, where they will get started on working on their business plan development and they will spend the next couple months until December 16th developing those business plans and they will submit them to a panel of independent judges who will then select the top two to receive a a $40,000 award uh, for consulting or technical assistance services. That should help their project along pretty well. Yeah. Uh, Do we have a moment? Can we go ahead and list the... Sure. We could list them. Yeah, go ahead. So the top 12 um, come from all over the region. The first one is Seven Echoes Homestead from Haines, Glacier Ground Rock Knobs from Haines, Shan Seat Incorporation from Craig, Chilkut Indian Enterprises from Haines, Icy Straight Lumber and Milling Incorporation uh, from Huna, uh, Tongas Guitars from Wrangell, Southeast Alaska Produce from Huna, Raven Guitars from Huna, The Sawmill Farm from Sitka, Copa from Juneau, Shelter Island Family Farm in Shelter Island, and Clahini Grange Feed and Seed from Haynes. Very good. Well, Mr. McNeil, maybe there's some companies there you can look at buying. Well, the other thing about this is that this is one aspect of Haani LLC, and the Haani LLC also has been very involved in uh, stimulating uh, mariculture, especially in the oyster farm business. And uh, we really believe that on a local basis that there can be opportunities that are built that don't exist right now. A lot of this, uh, uh, so the, the, the broad uh, concept of this was actually started o- overseas. And there's a, a well-known story called the elephant and the chili peppers from uh, in, uh, India. And essentially what it came down to is that, you know, the elephants were eating up all the all you know all the produce and there is no money to buy a fence or keep these elephants out well the look through local innovation the the people figured out that if you just ring the whole thing with chili peppers the elephants wouldn't come in and so they it was an innovation that really saved those communities and so this is the kind of thing where local innovation can, can really create uh, new opportunities and that's the kind of thing that we want to be able to to do within the region. And that was the whole purpose with creating Ha Honey, right? So, and, and that was la- last year, right, that you came yes. to, to start to launch this program? Yeah, it's been two years, yeah. Two years. Yeah. Any other programs like this foreseen through, through? There's no other business competition like this in Southeast Alaska. There's a couple other business competitions for statewide, but um, one that's specifically aimed at creating entrepreneurship and sustainable yeah. business development in Southeast. There's, there's I guess I meant to, to ask if there are similar initiatives planned by. By Ha'ani? Yeah. Well, this program actually lasts three years, so we this is the first cycle, and we'll repeat it again um, next year and the following year. So by the end, we'll have um, 36 applicants will have created business plans, and six applicants will have received the award. Um, so this is this is an ongoing project, and we'll see from there um, how successful it is, and if we want to keep going, or if we want to change some things, and and where we'll go. All right. 
Well, the, one of the most difficult things for a small entrepreneur is to raise money, and the Ha'ani has created the Community Development and a, uh, Development Fund, and that is a Department of Treasury program for which we're trying to, uh, we're in a fundraising mode to uh, be able to provide a core of an, an investment equity that would be available. Uh, because essentially the, you know, the banks in many ways pass, pass this by and there ne needs to be the formation of capital for, for this investment. That's one of the projects that Ahani is moving forward with. Okay. Anything more on the path to prosperity or? We... Just to look forward to, to seeing these 12 develop their businesses and, and stay tuned for the announcement of the top two in January. Yeah, you've got them spread out through the region. Yeah. From one end to the other. So, and we'll get this on our online newspaper, too. Yeah. And, and on the air as well. Mr. McNeil, I, I notice your organization's involved in the Southeast Conference. As a matter of fact, I see where three of your shareholders were reelected to the organization's board of directors during its meeting last month in Sitka. Why, why is the conference important to well, your corporation? Well, I think the conference is important because we have a really a, a big stake in the health and the economy of the region. And uh, Sea Alaska and certainly tribal member shareholders are very much involved in this individually uh, as leaders uh, in, in the conference. And uh, we want to continue to su support that because I believe that uh, this kind of collaboration within the region is something that will, will be an indep independent economic force. And so we'll continue to want to do that. We've also uh, participated in the Tongass Futures Roundtable, which is, you know, uh, more focused, but still about the, the you know, the overall uh, use of the forest, uh, and and so far as uh, the, all of the, you know, the key participants uh, in it are concerned. And we, and I think we're that really is a wave of the future is continuing to. Uh, collaborate and to be able to find uh, regional and uh, local community solutions. Yeah, I, I I guess too you have a an organization that you're associated with that will support you in, in your endeavors including matters before Congress and, and your lands bill legislation as well, right? Yeah, that's right. Well, I, you know, the Alaska Native Claims Settlement Act was really set up as an organic vehicle and Congress understood in 1971 that things would change, that needs mm -hmm. would change, and it basically built it into the structure of the Claim Settlement mm -hmm. Act. So the What's Claims that? Settlement Act is in essentially well, meant to be amended in order to... Was that to a pioneering piece of legislation, or was it patterned off of something else? No, it, the, lands, the Alaska Native Claims Settlement Act was truly a landmark yeah, okay. uh, legislation, because up to that time, uh, the, the Congress was not... Uh, deeding back lands to Native Americans. It, the only recourse that people had at that time was uh, to go before the United States Court of Claims and essentially receive pennies on the dollar. A member of our staff wanted me to ask uh, who owns a pellet wood stove was wondering what plan C. Alaska has for getting into that business in a bigger way. Well, we, of course, have a very large uh, pellet boiler uh, dry that's heating the Sea Alaska Plaza. Well, where do you get the pellets? Uh, we have purchased the pellets from the Pacific Northwest. Uh, uh, we would very much like to be and have an interest in the production of uh, pellets uh, in the region, uh, but there are a lot of uh, barriers to that. And among other things, the United States For Forest Service would have to make a commitment to make the the fiber uh, available to be in in that sector. Uh, pellets are green. Uh, they they in every way that you can think of are a, a pretty optimum way of utilizing the resource rather than diesel. And uh, we witnessed that in in our own uh, building because it's more efficient and cleaner than diesel. So people should write their congressman. Of course. Okay. Is there anything at all you'd like to add before we sign off the program, sir? Well, one of the things that I wanted to add, in so far as the future is concerned, we're, if you think about the kinds of things that we've been doing to try to build our tribal member capacity, the Board of Directors made a commitment in 1980 to a scholarship program and took the long view. And that has really borne benefits over time. And we really believe that we need to be thinking more broadly about uh, better public education for 
for our kids because that's really where you know the great growth and opportunity will occur. All right, well, thank you for taking the time to be with us today, and Elena, thank you very much thank for you. adding uh, that information on the peace, uh, prosperity progress. And thank you, Pete. Really do appreciate it. And we'd like to get you back maybe uh, on a regular basis, a quarterly basis, or something like that. Oh, would appreciate that. All right. Okay. Okay, folks, that's our program for today. Have a good day.